Now you probably didn't know this, but there are in fact microbe haters out there. And that means that the subject of today's video, microbial ratios, is probably going to upset quite a few people. In a lot of my other videos, I've spoken about the importance of microbes. And this is because soil is dynamic, soil is alive. Now, when we consider soil health, actually, we need to take the word health here because health is associated with things or something being alive. And so to me, it's obvious that biology has an important role in any soil that's healthy and working well. And we can see this in nature, it's all around us, and it's why we want to imitate certain conditions when we're growing food and plants. And we know this to be the case in the case of the human biome. We know that the gut microbes have an impact on our own mood and well-being, as well as our mental health. And you can check out another video I did on that subject. I'll put a link to that. It's this one here details in the description below. But I'm afraid there are others out there, haters who dismiss the idea that having certain microbial balances in your soil for different plants isn't actually that important. But what do you think's important? What do you think about bacterial and fungal ratios? I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a comment in the description below and we'll get some hustle going on in the community. While you're down there, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe if you're not already. Often, I think that the same arguments are used, and the main basis for contention being the lack of scientific evidence. What we mean here are rigorous trials that are repeatable. The methodology allows them to be carried out by others over and over, and they've been checked over by other scientists in the process that's called peer review. This we call good science. So it's a little bit like compost tea here. There are very, very few repeatable tests that have determined the same results and conclusively proved that certain plants require a more fungi or slightly more bacterial type soil in order to have their optimal growing conditions. I think there's a variety of reasons why this might be the case. So first of all, there is lack of funding or funding streams. And we should all understand that a huge proportion of scientific research is funded by those who stand to financially benefit or not from the information one way or another. So it might also be that the subject matter is just not interesting enough to new scientists or those already engaged in other projects. Soil has only recently really become more sexy. So whatever the reasons, there is simply not a lot of evidence out there that you can find on the internet. And the little that does exist actually does very little to match up the evidence with the increasingly popular belief that soil microbial balances are important. And this is not really very helpful to us. Now, just to clarify, when we talk about organism ratios, we're referring to the amount of each type in relation to another. In most cases, this is about bacteria versus fungi. And we're not actually concerned with the numbers of each of them, although this does have an impact on the output. What we actually are concerned with is the mass of each in relation to each other. So what we refer to as the biomass. Due to the scale of these little critters, it's clearly going to take a lot of bacteria to make up the same mass as fungi. And so the way in which you measure these organisms and determine your biomass has also compounded this issue in the lack of evidence. And there's numerous ways to calculate biomass of bacteria and fungi and the associated ratios with that. Um, if people do this differently, which they have in many of the studies I looked at, then the results will also be different as well. And that, again, doesn't really help things. But all of this actually misses a really important point. And that point is that plants are key drivers of soil processes. They communicate, stimulate and interact with all the organisms that they want in the soil. And those organisms will work for them. Now, with all of this being known, do you really need to build soil life and adjust the balance of bacteria compared to fungi to be more optimal for your plants. After all, we know woody shrubs and berry fruit prefer more fungal soil and trees do as well, whereas grass is thriving more bacterial soil. So can't the plants do all the work for us? Won't they create 
their own optimal soil conditions? Well, the answer is actually partly yes. They can do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, but perhaps not all. What happens if you're dealing with a severely depleted soil rather than a controlled laboratory soil? If certain organisms and species are missing, what is the plant actually going to communicate with anyway? And where modern fertilizers are often used, these connections are often lost or even bypassed, meaning that poor little Billy bacteria is no longer needed, so he leaves home for good. Now also, if you could give your plants a head start, wouldn't you want to? After all, we're trying to produce the healthiest, tastiest food that we can for us. And we should be treating our crops and plants with a similar level of care as we would ourselves, inside and out, nutritionally and biologically. So here's what I think of all of this. We know that soils change, and even with some scientific evidence indicating that certain plants can grow under numerous and different microbial ratios rather than a fixed optimal balance of bacteria to fungi. When we look into nature and the extremes of what we're talking about here, so wild meadows with highly bacterial soil, fungal woodlands, um, we know that in the end the soil co-evolves with the plant. The plant is the driver and it stimulates the microbial community as it sees fit and this evolves more over time as the plant grows. Now given that plants are sneaky and will take the easiest approach to resources that it can, why would it change the soil dynamics for any reason other than self-service? Basically it alters the microbial balance because for whatever reason it's in its own interest. So with that in mind, shouldn't we actually be starting with the end in mind too when we're growing and help our plant reach that microbial utopia much quicker? So there you go. Hopefully you found that to be an interesting spin on quite a controversial subject. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like. And until the next video, I will see you.